Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to make a vase, or a vase, out of scrap pine wood. This measures in an inch and a quarter, so it's nice and thick. This was left over from another project. Instead of just throwing it away, we're going to try and make some kind of vase out of it. Now the idea is to cut out the circle on a scroll saw. Once we've cut out the inner circle, and leaving that nice thickness here as the side walls of our vase. We're going to cut seven of these out and literally just stack them one on top of the other. And that will be the nice shape of our vase. And then we'll sand it down and we'll look into what kind of linseed or varnish or stain that we want at the end. It might even be covered with resin. But that's later and a bit further down the line. Like I say, it's nice and thick, so we've got to go steady with the cut. What I did for my template was simply... Basically grab something that fitted in, I use an old tin of paint, I draw around that with a pencil, that's the actual size of my vase. So if you visualise that, that's basically the shape that we're going for. And on for the inner cut, I did use a tin of varnish, but it left the walls just a little bit too narrow for me. So you can see that extra line there. So I went indoors and got myself just a simple glass, and that fitted in there perfect. Just making them side walls a little bit thicker and just to make sure I had it centre on each ones of the each of the ones that we've drawn around already on the tin of paint. I made a simple template and if it all works fine we can keep that. Put that on the circles that I'd already cut out, uh, sorry, already drawn out. Literally pop that on there and drawn inside with a pencil. Nothing too complicated there. So we want the inner cut going to cut that out nice circle hopefully doesn't got hasn't got to be perfect because there will be a bit of sanding down to do and then we'll cut out the outer circle on six of these we do have seven one two three four five six seven on one i'm going to pick we can go for this one if you want to we'll use this as a base so i'm going to route out this first one and route it down maybe three quarters away just leaving enough there so we're going to route out all that or as much as we can and that will be our base and then simply as we cut each one of these out we can just stack them on top so another six to go so it works out roughly inch and a quarter times all the bits it should be eight inches plus eight and three quarters something like that at the end we'll find out depending on how much sanding down we're going to do okay for the router i'm just going to throw in one of these straight spiral bits they're double bladed it's got a quarter inch shaft on, so that just fit into the router, no problem. People that watch my videos know I normally use the adapter collet on smaller pieces, CNC bits and end millibits. But for today, we'll go straight in with this one, and we'll go down as deep as we dare, right down there, like so. Cut that one out, and that's our base, and then literally just cut all the other ones out on a scroll saw. We'll talk about that nearer towards the cutting out time. Okay, let's pop this one in the router and do our base section first. Right, we've got our router bit in the router. Probably set up about a quarter of an inch. We don't want to go in too deep. We're literally just going to go around this to get the shape we want in the circle. And then we'll lower it and go around again and maybe lower it two or three times. Just nibble at it bit by bit. Don't set it to an inch and go in straight away. It's just too much strain on the router itself and you just end up burning the wood and stuff. So we'll nibble at this first. Remember, this is our base one. Once we've done this one, the router's put to one side and we'll get this scroll saw out. Okay, let's start routing this one out. Right, that's our inner cut done with the scroll saw. That's a nice depth, is that? And that make a nice little base. We can just check that depth quickly on here with a screwdriver, and you can see more or less we've gone three quarters away down, and that's plenty for what we need. So that's going to be our base. We can actually just come in from the side on this one with the scroll saw blade and literally cut that circle out. On the other six, obviously, we've got to get the blade inside. 
So you literally drill what they call a pilot hole. That's literally so you can feed your blade in through that little hole there. We've drilled it on every one of them, obviously. We'll pop the blade through there and then we'll cut out that inner circle. Always do your inner cuts first. Just gives you a bit more to work on. If we're going to do the outer cut first, we don't have this section to work on. So always do your inner cuts. So we'll do all those next and then remove the outer cuts and then we can start stacking them on top of here and see what kind of shape we got. Now for the scroll saw, I do like to use my spiral blades. They're not for everybody, but they're ideal for me. They do cut in any direction, so no messing about. So we'll literally feed that blade through that hole and we can just cut that out like so. Whereas if you use a standard blade, which is just as easy, you can start there and then you'll have to just keep turning your wood like so. So find something that works for you. So we'll pop this spiral blade in the scroll saw. I have to use these adapter clamps on mine. It's a bit old fashioned, my drapper saw. Right, there's our first one cut out. You can see from that. We might get another project out of those scrap bits over there. So there's our first section. It's maybe a bit too thick to be honest and I should have probably gone with my original line which was just there. If you wanted to, you could easily just cut round again. But I'm going to leave it like that. Since it's my first one, I just want a bit of firmness about it. By the time we've sanded it down and glued it and put it into shape. We'll see what we've got. Okay, there's the first one done. Now I've got another six of these to cut. So I won't bore you with that. I'll just go off and cut about my ledger and then come back when we're ready to put it together for some kind of gluing. Right, just before we start gluing this all together, you'll notice this will be the top of the cut. That's nice and smooth. On the bottom you get these little knobbly bits, a little rough stuff, so we just want to gently go around and just clear them off like that. Just so no, no bits are left on there when we come to glue it together. Now remember we don't have to go too fantastic on the inside of the vase container because nobody's going to see it. And we have that little bit around the edges as well, like so. It takes a couple of minutes per piece, then once it's all nicely cleaned off, like so, we can pop it on there and then we start on the next one. Okay we've sanded them down enough for what we want, just them little edges on the inside there and the outside. Now I had a couple of options how to put this together, I'm also going to go for the good old just standard wood glue, nothing too fantastic. At one time I was going to glue it, maybe get two or three together like so, and then pre-drill it all there for a screw, and feed a screw down for them three there, and then basically do the same with the next three. But uh, that probably wasn't one of my better ideas. So I'm literally just going to glue it all together. I did have a play about, and looking at the grain and stuff, and I tried to match it up in certain places like there maybe, and then we could twist that one around there if you really wanted to play with it or turn it around the opposite way if you want to so you get some kind of grain, nice grain pattern going down like so but somewhere along the line it's not going to match up nicely so I'm just going to throw it together see what it comes out like once it's all nicely glued in so we'll start from the bottom obviously and the idea is I'll either get some clamps on or put another board on like this at the top and just let some weight sit on it so we'll start off with our glue. Not a lot left in here, so we might just get away with it. Just 
This is really old, is this glue? So like so, just throw it down. We're going to have a lot of sanding on here, remember, so let's not be overly concerned about any mess. Okay, that's a general idea, and we'll just pop that on there like so. A little press down. And that'll do for now, and we'll simply just move on to the next one. Right, we've got that all clamped in now. So we'll just literally just leave it to one side. We'll come back tomorrow, if not the next day, and see what we've got. Right, it's a couple of days later. We're basically just going to remove the clamps and we'll see if it's stuck down. I would rather we had a bit more glue in what we did. So we'll have to purchase some more for next time round. But hopefully this will do what we need. Okay, well it seems solid enough. Now all we need to do is start sanding these sounds, uh, sides down and get them nice and smooth. We'll use a belt sander for that and then we'll come in with a mouse sander and then a bit of sandpaper itself. And I'd like to just round off these edges if we can, just to finish it off a bit better. Okay, let's try a bit of sanding down. Right, that's enough sanding down for me. It's nice and smooth, is that? Definitely got, got the effect I was looking for. Now, just to get that nice and dark again and get these grains showing up really nice, I'm going to basically just put on my normal boiled linseed oil. Just give it a nice coating of that. We'll literally just brush it on, give it a wipe down. And once it's dry, we'll look at what kind of finish we're going to put on it. You might have noticed there, just at the end of the video for the sanding down, I'll use one of these mini two-inch sanding pads. They're fine, they basically just fit onto the end of your flexi cable on your Dremel or rotary tool. And they come on, come on with nice little Velcro pads, like so. A nice bag full of different pads, ranging from 120 grit up to 1,000 plus. I mean, really smooth ones here. They do take a bit of getting used to. Once they're actually turned on, sorry about that. Once they're turned on, but they do do a nice finish, but sometimes they can just nick away at you. So just be careful if you try fancy one of these two inch sanding pads. And they literally just fit on like so. Okay, let's get some linseed oil on now. This is just a case of brushing it in. So we've got our linseed oil, like so. We'll see how the wood darkens, hopefully, once we start putting it on. This is just a case of throwing it on like so. We get the general idea from there, don't we? And we'll do the top piece as well. And if we want to, we might go down two or three inside as well. Okay, I'll finish this off and then we'll let it dry. Give it a wipe down before, once we finish, should I say. And then we'll let it dry. And we'll basically see what we've ended up with once we've put our finish on it. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now to finish it off with, I literally sprayed four or five coats of a yacht varnish just give it a nice shine. This would, would look nice with clear resin put over it. Or you can play with it and just put on whatever you want. But for me, a bit of spray, just give it a nice little shine. You can see from that, 
I've actually turned the flash off on the phone just so we don't get all the dust showing I'll give you a general idea in the best natural light that I can find at this time of the evening so there we have it this little project is more or less finished just remember it's a vase made from scrap pine wood this originally was a tabletop and it would have got thrown away so we've made ourselves another little project now this is ideal for artificial flowers obviously you couldn't put water in there however if you wanted to you could literally just get a plastic bottle like so cut off the top and just drop that inside now you can throw your water in there no problem whatsoever you could actually use a bigger bottle as a template to start you off with if you wanted to put it in a vessel inside as we say so that's it then so one scroll sword vase made out of recycled pine it stands at nine inches by four inches across scroll sword project thank you very much for watching